welcome to the channel Drum Master. Today you're going to learn how to tune an acoustic drum. The tools we're going to use are the usual key for the drum and a trick I'm going to show you. We're going to use an electric screwdriver with the appropriate looking drill bit. It's a key for the drum that is sold in any music shop or store to use with electric screwdrivers. Here, your screwdriver must have the ability to change the levels of the strengths. Okay, and this will help you to tune the drum really quickly. What's more, with this tool you'll be able to take apart and put back together or change the heads very quickly. What's more, with this key you'll be able to take apart and put it back together or change the heads very quickly. First we're going to prepare our drum, the bass drum. It mustn't sound like a sauce, but... <laughs> and we're going to add a soft object to muffle any boom or ringing. I'm going to take the head off and fill it with a cushion or a pillow, something soft, okay? We take off the hoop, we take off the head. I'm going to put this blanket inside, okay? We take off the hoop, the head, and I'm taking out this blanket. We support our drum, okay? This cushion, or blanket, must connect with the two sides of the heads, okay? I don't fill it completely, not even half full, only up to about here to quieten the harmonics, you know, to get rid of any booming or ringing on the two sides of the head. Okay, I put it here and now we close it with the head. Now we're going to do it back up without using the keys, just with our fingers. Only using our, our hands, not using any strings. Now I've done it up by hand. Now I press on the shell to make sure it's in place. Again, we tighten the screws, okay? I can't do it up anymore by hand, so now I, I take the key and I give half a turn to each one. But we are going to work in the following order. Here, first, then in parallel, Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Okay? We can't just go round clockwise or it will not sit well. It has to be done evenly. So let's start. One, two, three, four, Five, Cinco. six, Seis. seven, eight. Okay, my head is now well placed. Now you must make sure it doesn't have any creases. If it doesn't, this head doesn't need to be tightened anymore. This head normally has to be put on, not too tight so as it has a deep, low sound, okay? The resonant head can be tightened a little bit more. You can give it two turns per screw. If you tighten it, I turn here, you can tighten two at the opposite side. Always check that it doesn't have creases. If it is creased here, for example, here, then this screw can be tightened more. If the crease is down here, then I tighten this, this screw more. But if we have done it proportionately, it shouldn't have any problems.
Well, now we are going to continue with the toms. The drum set has three pitches. It's got high, middle and low. Let's start with the high-pitched one, the smallest one. The smallest one there is. In my case, it's a 12-inch tom. The drum heads on the toms are different. The batter head side is fatter and the bottom one is thinner. This head cannot be beaten, the resonant head. It's always at the bottom, okay? Then the main tone is given by the lower head. The, the upper head only changes the resonance in the strength of the rebound. Let's start with the batter head, which is above, and we will check how strong the rebound is and how it sounds. If it is completely loose, we're going to tighten the, the lug screws by hand until each one is in its place, and then we will give it two turns with the key. Now we're going to start with the tom, okay? Imagine it's completely loosened. Okay, the head is completely loosened. As you can hear, it doesn't make a good sound. Okay, what I'm going to do is tighten all the screws by hand until each one goes into a place. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Here it's done up. Here it is, all right. Here, a little bit more. This one and this one. Here it is, all right. Here, a little bit more. This one and this one. Now I press the, the hoop so that it sits well. And again, I go round the lug screws tightening. Now I can't tighten any more. Now I take the keys and start to work with them. Half a turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? Let's listen to see if our drum has the right tone now. Oh, it's very low, very ugly. So, we're going to give another turn to each lug screw. One, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to quieten the lower, the lower head, the resonant head, with my hand and check out how the batter head rebounds when I hit it. It bounces very little and the tone's really low, okay? Again, I quieten the lower head with my hand and hit the upper one. Okay. Now I like how the drum stick rebounds or bounces and it has a high tone. Listen to how it sounds. That's a high tone. Let's leave it because this drum is the highest. We are going to work on the main sound with the main tone. We turn it around, okay? Uh, this, this head, we can't beat, it's the resonant head. But a gentle tap in the middle. We're going to give it some little taps, okay? I can see it has creases and that it's not in its place. First, I'm, I'm going over these keys again, okay? And with the key, I give it a half a turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now let's listen. I'm not going to put my hand on the bottom this time. Don't forget, this is the uh, resonant head. This sound is how it's going to sound in the end, and I don't like it because it's too high. It has to sound much lower, so I'm going to give it half a turn with the key. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we leave the resonant head and strike the batter head and check the sound. It's not bad. 
but I'm going to tighten it a little more. Now I'm not going to muffle the batter head with my hand and we're going to check the sound of the resonant head. It's not bad, but I'm going to tighten it a little bit more. I like it lower. Half a turn again. Let's listen, okay? You mustn't hit it hard or you will dent in the head. This tone I like. It sounds very high, but that's how it has to be, because it is the smallest and that way it leaves a margin to lower the tone of the other two tones. Let's continue with the other two tones. The second one must sound lower, but we're going to start again. First with the re rebound of the drum head. I tighten the screws in the same way by hand, okay? It doesn't have any creases. I put my hand on the bottom and check the bounce. Okay, it rebounds well. Let's correct the turn of the, the lower head of the drum. I turn it over, okay? What's happening with this side? Oh, it sounds very low. Oh, it has no tone whatsoever. So I'm going to start giving it half a turn to each screw lug. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and six, okay? And I'm going to listen to tone of this head. It appears to sound well, but we have to compare it to the first tom. Tom number one, batter head, and number two, the resonant side, and number two, the resonant side. This head has to sound a bit lower, okay? I'm going to tighten it a bit more, just a little. Okay, turn it round, and now, after turning it round, we're going to check the tone of the first and second drums. Well, the difference is a big jump, and I want the tone to go down little by little. There is too much of a contrast. So, I want this tom to sound a little bit higher. I'm going to loosen a little here below. Half a turn, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's okay. All right. We can tell this one is higher and this one is lower. But the difference isn't quite so big, that's okay. And now we're going to do the bass tom. The bass tom, I've noticed that this one has loosened a lot. Oh, it's very loose. It even has creases. So, I do up the lug screws by hand, okay? So I tighten, half a turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What if I want to use my screwdriver to work faster? Well, I simply take out the electric screwdriver and do it a bit quicker using the strength levels. For example, on your electric screwdriver, you have to put it on the number one strength level, okay? Number one is supposed to be the minimum strength, the weakest strength. Check it is. Make sure it's on the weakest strength. Hold it here, press the button, and it doesn't turn, because it's very weak. Okay, level one. You can usually use for the lower tones, for the bass, for example. But the toms, I, I have a custom of putting on number two, okay? If after going over all the... Um, Upper lug screws and lower ones, you notice that you need to 
raise or lower. With the key, you can do it and make a more precise sound. But this tom, I know this drum set quite well. I know that it needs a number two, okay? And now I'm going to use the number two on the resonant head as well. And I'm going to go over all the lug screws. Well now, it's very important to check and I'm going to go over the lower head comparing it with the previous tom without touching the bottom head against anything so that it vibrates well. I'm going to try it. We can now tell that this head is lower, okay? If you like that sound, we will leave it at that. If you want it a bit higher, tighten it half a turn with the key, and if you want it lower, half a turn loosening. This is higher, and this one is lower. Now we're going to go over how our toms are tuned. Okay, it's okay. If you want the, the bass to sound lower, you have to lower the resonant head. Okay, I'm going to lower the tone, giving it half a turn anti-clockwise. And immediately we check, without turning it over, if it is as low as we want it. Yeah, now it is. Mm, okay. If for any reason you want to make your drums sound lower, and you think you, they, they are just very high toned, you simply have to lower it with a half a turn on the resonant heads of each tom. We start here with the highest toned one, and half a turn to each of the, the, the toms, finishing with the bass. That way you will lower the tone of your drum set, but the jump between the pitches of the sound will stay the same as when you set it up at the start. Okay, now we're going to tune the snare drum. This side that has the wires, you can't tune it because the wires won't let you. Simply first I'm going to tighten the lug screws with my fingers, not the key. And once I can't tighten it anymore, I give it two turns with the key to each lug screw. This head we have to really tighten up. It has to be very tense. Again, an option is to use the electric screwdriver on the level 3 and tighten up all the lug head screws. The top head, I can see, is rather creased. I could tighten it up by hand, but to work more quickly, I'm going to use the electric screwdriver. As I said before, it's the fastest way to work. I'm going to set it at level 3 and tighten up all the lug screws. Now you have to lower the staves. Here is the mechanism. Okay. Lowering the staves. And I'm checking this head sounds well. What's more, this head has to bounce a lot because we have to we have to make roll strokes here. 
Now you can tell it sounds higher. If you, if you hit the drum and you check, put your hand on it and check how it bounces. It doesn't bounce very well. So I'm going to tighten it a bit more with the key. Half a turn. Okay, let's listen to how it sounds. Oh, we can hear that it's very high, right? Well, I can try the bounce. Oh, it bounces well. The tone is high and now we're going to work on the staves. Vale, escucha cómo suena. Se nota que muy agudo, ¿verdad? Here you have a, a little wheel that adjusts the sounds of your staves. Let's move it to the left, loosening it. Okay, I've loosened it and I move the staves up and I listen to the sound. Okay, it's loose. And I move the staves up and listen to the sound. I put my hand on the head and, and you can hear a long tail to the sound, true? You hear a really long sound, no? So let's tighten it up with the wheel to the right this time. Three turns. Now it sounds a bit better, but the sound is still a bit long. I give it two more turns. Well, it's the sound that some people are using, which I call the vintage sound. I don't like it because it still has a very long sound and I prefer it to be a nice, short, dry sound. I'm, I'm going to increase the tone of the wires, giving it three more turns. Hand on the drum again and a little bit more. Okay, that's all right. We have the snare drum tuned. Now all we need are some stickers or a hoop to reduce the harmonics like the echo of the drum head. I'm sure you have seen in music shops some hoops that are see-through, like transparent even, that you can put on the top of the drums, okay? and the snare drum. Some are transparent, some are white. They are round and the size of your drum. For example, if the drum sounds like this, it would sound like this with a hoop in place. Okay, but sometimes these hoops dampen the sound too much, especially with the snare drum. For the toms, the hoops are worthwhile, but for the snare drum, they can dampen the sound too much. I'm using stickers. Now I'll show you. Okay, the stickers that they sell in any music shop are sometimes of different colors or transparent. Damping pads, they're called. Okay, let's put a sticker on each drum. On the, the bass tom, you can put two because they're very large and sometimes with one it's just not enough. On the snare drum, you can put on one or two depending on the sound you want. The stickers, oh the stickers, you're going to put them usually here next to the edge, up here, uh, up here and, and here, in a place where they aren't going to get in the way where you don't usually hit the drum with the drumstick. Now you can hear the difference between without the sticker and with the sticker. Uh, um, the staves are lowered, okay? I take off the sticker. Oh, it sounds very tinny. And with the sticker, oh, it sounds much cleaner. The same with the toms, okay? You have to put on the stickers or by the hoop and that will reduce this tinniness. And then you have your drum tuned. Don't forget, a final detail, a sticker on the bass drum to protect it from wear.
If you don't put a sticker here, you're going to damage the, the head quickly and it will wear out fast. If you put on a protective sticker, the head will last a lot longer, okay? And you must also remember different aspects that are going to influence the sound of your drums. In the first place, we must concentrate on the tuning, because even if you buy the most expensive drum set in the world with the best heads there are, if it isn't tuned, it isn't going to sound well. And a, a cheap, even a bad drum set that is well tuned is going to sound better. Okay, that's first the tuning. The second aspect that we want to go over that will affect your drum's final sound is the quality of the casings or shells of the drum. There are drums which have the shells made of birch or of maple or of oak. Okay, they are very expensive ones and they have the best materials and the best sound. They're wonderful, like they're awesome. So, if you have a drum set that is very good, high quality, you know, a good brand name, we could name some brand. If you have a good one with good heads that are well tuned, that drum set is going to sound great. The third aspect I'd like to mention, and people forget, even though they know, is the brand of the actual heads you use. 
You can have a cheap drum, drum set for 300 or 100 euros, but if you put on some good quality heads, you know, professional ones, you know, I'm talking about Remo and Evans, two manufacturers that make the best heads in the world, although there are other makers, Remo and Evans are the best. If you buy these heads, although your drums may be quite cheap, they're going to sound much, much, much better with these heads than before. And a professional or semi-professional range drum set must also have professional heads, okay? You are not going to buy an S-Class Mercedes car and put on it cheap tires, are you? Logically not. The same goes for your drum set. However, having a professional drum set with professional heads, well tuned, is still going to be influenced by other factors like the ambient sound, you know, the acoustic conditions where you're going to play. What I mean is that the acoustic conditions of where we play can be very cruel to musicians. If you're in the open air, well, it's not so bad. But if you are at a premises where the sound doesn't move through the space well, there is a lot of feedback and the sound bounces around the walls, making that terrible ee sound. Even with the best drums in the world, you are not going to make a nice sound. You're going to have problems because if the place has bad acoustics, it's going to sound bad. It's logical. Imagine a large warehouse or a sports hall that has acoustics that are horrifying. The drums will sound badly, but not only the drums, all the instruments as well, and the voice of the singer, that's going to sound bad too. The sound insulation conditions of each premises of a gig is going to be different, and it affects the overall sound produced. So, a good sound technician is a must. Here you can see the level of force or strength that you should use with the electric screwdriver when changing the batter heads. And here we can see the levels that we need for the resonant heads. Well, now you know how to tune a rock drum set. I hope this video has been of some use to you. So, see you soon. And as ever, please, if you like the video, press the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Bye!